Hello everybody, today we will invade a new surgical approach related to peritonitis. So we need to welcome our guest, Dr. Natanto Sweeney. Uh, welcome Dr. Natanto. Thank you very much for having me in this podcast today. Thank you so much for your being on my side today. We will uh, invade a very critical uh, topic and we are trust you will support us with very valuable insights as well. So firstly, I need to ask about, can you shed light on different types of peritonitis and their clinical characteristic for our listener? Go. So when we talk of the different types of peritonitis, the, the clinical presentation of peritonitis is basically almost the same for all patients presenting with peritonitis, except for the fact that for patients with primary peritonitis, the signs and symptoms are subtle compared to those with uh, secondary peritonitis. Because in these patients with primary peritonitis, the ascites kind of separate the visceral peritoneum from the pareta peritoneum, which makes the pain not as severe as for patients with uh, secondary peritonitis. So the clinical presentation of peritonitis, these patients, they often present with abdominal pain, which is initially dull and poorly localized. Then this pain will then, the pain will then progress to a steady, severe and more localized pain. The pain may be exacerbated by any movement like coughing, uh, flexing the thigh, and even local pressure will, will exacerbate the pain. And um, the pain can then become diffuse over time, like you have diffuse pain everywhere. And the patient may also present with worsening or unexplained encephalopathy, diarrhea, illuse, hypotension, hypothermia, and worsening or new onset renal failure. This one will see them mostly in patients with, uh, with primary peritonitis. And on physical examination, of this patient, they will present, they will be ill looking. They will have a fever that exceeds 38 degrees Celsius. But it's also important to note that when, in case of severe sepsis, the patient can become hypo, hypothermic. And also, they, they will be tachycardic or have a very high rate, very high heart rate. And as the, the progress to the, as the, the, as the, as the disease progresses, the digestion sets in the patient becomes hypotensive and also the urine output decreases to such level that they become oliguric or even anuric with severe peritonitis. On abdominal examination, the patient will demonstrate tenderness to palpation and they will also have uh, abdominal rigidity and which we can describe as uh, voluntary or they may have voluntary uh, guarding and so on. I think that is basically what they can say when it comes to the clinical presentation of uh, patients with uh, peritonitis. Great. So, Dr. Nutanto, when is the surgery is the treatment of a choice for peritonitis and what are the key goals for surgical intervention? Okay, as we kind of, as we earlier differentiated them into primary and secondary peritonitis. Primary peritonitis is most often treated just medically. There's, they don't, they, there's no requirement for surgery in primary peritonitis, they can be treated just with antibiotics and, and so. But for secondary peritonitis, secondary peritonitis, we need to have a source control. So if there's a bowel perforation, there needs to be uh, there needs to be a surgery to control the contamination, to control the source and so on. So I would say the management targets correcting the underlying process such as we start with administering uh, systemic antibiotics, uh, we supportive therapy to prevent or limit sec uh, secondary complications due to multiple organ failure, and then source control, which involves a laparotomy, maybe to reject a portion of the bowel, maybe to do a debridement of necrotic or infected tissues, and so on. So surgery is the gold standard treatment for secondary peritonitis. The surgery can be open surgery, it can be minimal invasive, where we do just incision, where we do just percutaneous drainage of the, maybe a collection if it's localized, or it can be an open surgery where we have, uh, when we have formula peritonitis and we need to do a thorough peritoneal washout and, and so on. 
Great. So, Dr. Nutanto, can you discuss some advanced surgical techniques or technologies used in managing complex uh, cases? Um, I would say advances in the treatment, advances in the treatment of peritonitis during the last five decades have mainly been due to the advent of antibiotics and intensive care medicine, and uh, also there have been better understanding of the synergism of bacteria in the peritoneal cavity, and also there have been an improvement in the systemic inflammation response due to uh, peritoneal infection. So, the surgical treatment of peritonitis. I can say it started the first the first uh, laparotomy for peritonitis was done in the beginning of the 19th century and in the beginning of 20th century the German Kirchner defined the principles of perito of uh, surgery for peritonitis that we are still using up to today which involve early surgical intervention elimination of source of infection and third peritoneal uh, lavage. And also, uh, in the past decades, we've had uh, improvement in diagnostic procedures like uh, CT scan, ultrasound, laparoscopy. So, especially laparoscopy has brought a lot of improvement in the surgery for peritonitis, where now, uh, in case of well-controlled or localized peritonitis, we don't go in with a large laparotomy incision. We can do just maybe an image-guided ultrasound drainage or a laparoscopic drainage and uh, this has brought a lot of improvement in the outcome of uh, patients with peritonitis. But when it comes to complex cases, most complex cases, we see follow the procedure that was described by the by Kirchner in the in the beginning of the of the 20th century, which involved laparotomy, early intervention, source control, and peritoneal toilet. Perfect. So, Dr. Nutanto, how do you approach post-operative care for patients who have undergone surgery for peritonitis? Uh, the post-operative care for patients who have undergone peritonitis, most often the approach will be a multidisciplinary approach involving uh, the intensive care team to make sure the patient is uh, hemodynamically and to make sure the patient receives appropriate hemodynamic, pulmonary, and respiratory arena support, systemic antibiotics, nutritional and metabolic support, inflammatory response modulator, and so on. So this approach is more like focusing on making sure the patient is appropriately resuscitated with fluids, the patient is on appropriate antibiotics, the respiratory, the respiratory system and the renal system are well uh, supported, and to make sure that the nutrition of the patient is also well uh, elaborated and the metabolic state is in good shape because i think these are some of the things that will influence the outcome the surgery might be well done everything is running properly but with poor resuscitation with a poor nutritional status uh the patient the outcome might not be might not be the best so we focus more on this working together with the intensive care unit the the the, the, the intensive care unit the nutritional units and so on to make sure that all these are put in place and are done accordingly. Great. So, Dr. Nkwanto, finally, I need to know how can surgeons and intensivists and other healthcare professionals best uh, work together to optimize patient outcomes? When it comes to this, I would say it's based more on building trust and partnership, trusting, being able to trust our uh, each other with the patient, deep sense of respect, clear and open communication of expectations from both teams and a collaborative attitude and also why not rounding together with the patient to see the patients. These are some of the things I think can help improve the outcome of patients after surgery. So Dr. Antonto, finally I need to thank you so much for your valuable insight and the clarifying the surgical approaches to peritonitis and help you all success in managing your patients. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it and I wish you all the best. Sir. Thank you so much. We hope to meet you again in different episodes related to clarifying a lot of surgical approaches. Thank you.